Hello and welcome to K2P classes. The objective of this class is to learn number systems. Guru Basis says that success is proportional to effort given Dil Se. In this class we are going to study introduction to number systems, irrational numbers, real numbers and their decimal expenses. In the another class we will cover next three topics. So let us uh, see what is a number system. Whatever we know till date, till class 9, you know all the numbers. Okay, So the number can be grouped into two parts. Real numbers and unreal numbers. Or unreal numbers are also called imaginary number. Till date, whatever we have learned, it is real number. In class 11, we will learn about imaginary numbers. So we don't have to worry about that. <coughs> so All numbers known to you till dates, they are real number. Real numbers can be grouped into two groups, rational numbers and irrational number. Numbers which can be written as p by q format where q is not zero are called rational number. Why it is called rational number? Because it can be represented in ratio. And what is irrational number? Oh, which cannot be written as p by q. But that is a very uh, unclear definition. So let me put very concise definitions. If a number can be represented in a terminating decimal or repeating decimal, it is called rational number. And if a number is neither terminating nor repeating, then it is called irrational number. Because this type of number cannot be represented as p by q. Rational numbers can be grouped in two parts, integers and fraction number. Integers are the numbers uh, which doesn't contain anything after decimal, like 3. 3 means 3. Although 3 can be written as 3.0, but 3 is a 3 is an integer. Fractional number after decimal having terminating or repeating digits like 3.28, 2.14, 1414. This is also fractional number because it is repeating. Integers can be grouped in two parts, negative integers and positive integers. <coughs> positive integers are also called whole numbers. So 0, 1, 2, 3 are called whole number. Terminated decimal is 3.28, 5.56987.346. And repeating decimals like 56.9595, So this 954954 is repeating. And the whole number, under whole number, uh, comes natural numbers. So what is natural numbers? Natural numbers means 1, 2, 3, excluding 0. So this is your number tree or number system. Now, uh, let us move ahead. 
is zero a rational number? Yes, zero is a rational number. As it can be written as zero by one. <coughs> uh, state six rational numbers between three and four. The question is how many rational numbers are between three and four? There are infinite rational number in between three and four. Why three and four? Between any two rational numbers, there are infinite rational and irrational numbers. In fact, between any two numbers, numbers may be 3.1, 3.2, 3 3.3. State five rational numbers between 3 by 5 and 4 by 5, that is 0.6 and 0. Then again, how many rational numbers are between 0.6 and 0.8? Infinite. So number may be 6.1, uh, 6.1, 6.3. Now, state true and false. Every natural number is a whole number, right? Yes. Every integer is a whole number. No, this is wrong because negative numbers are not whole number. Every rational number is a whole number. Again, it is not true because fractional numbers are not whole number, but fractional number or rational number. What is an irrational number? In the previous slide, I have already defined irrational number. If a number cannot be expressed in the form of p by q, where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0, then the number is called irrational number. That is classical definition. But for all the practical purpose, just in that after point, the symbol, if it is not terminating or if it is not repeating, it is an irrational number, like root 2. Just see in calculator that what is root 2 is coming. So if you see root 2, it is coming 0.141421356. So if you see after decimal, it is not terminating. You can see that yes, it is terminating here uh, 97. But no, this is the limitation of the calculator. If you go divide go, it will go up to infinity. And neither it is repeating. So that is why root 2 is an irrational number. Similarly, root 3, it is again going up to infinity and it is not repeating and neither terminating. So it is an irrational number. In not say, if a number have infinite digits after decimal and there is no repeating patterns after decimal non terminating and non repeating the numbers is called irrational number in fact a square root of any number if it is not a perfect square root is an irrational number example root 2 root 3 root 5 root 6 root 7 root 8 and so on is root 9 an irrational number? Just think, no. Why? Because a square root of 9 is plus minus 3. Is 3.142875142875 is an irrational number? Just think, no. Because this number the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers are repeating. So if it is repeat or it is terminating, it is not an irrational number. Now, uh, let us define these numbers. Like 1, 1, 7, it is natural number, whole number, integer number. So if you see in the graph, so it is a a real number and it is a 
natural number, whole number, and integer as well as rational number. 0 is a whole number, an integer, and a rational number. Look, here it is going up to infinity, so it is an irrational number. Minus 1 by 2 is a rational number because it can be expressed as p by q. 6.36 is a rational number because it is terminating after decimal. After decimal. There are two digits after decimal and after that it is terminating. It is ending here. So it is a rational number. Point 0.3. It is an integer rational number. Pi. Pi is an irrational number. Why? Because pi value is this much and up to infinity. But you may think, how can we pi uh, an irrational number when pi value is 3.14 or 22 by 7? So, uh, this is misconception. Pi value cannot be defined. It is, its uh, approximate value is 3.14 or 22 by 7 but it is not exact value of pi for all practical purpose for calculating and we take value of pi as 22 by 7 or 3.14 22 by 7 is rational number because it can be represented as p by q root 2 root 2 is an irrational number. Why? Because root 2 cannot be determined because if you find out root 2, it goes up to infinity. Decimal expansion. 0.333 can be written as 0, 0.3 and bar above 3 because 3, 3 is repeating. Similarly, 8.354674674 can be written as 8.35 and bar over 467 because 467s are repeating. Write the decimal expansion for these rational numbers ratio to fraction like 9 by 32. It is very simple. Divide 32 uh, 9 by 32, you will get 0 0.2815. Similarly, 15 by 22. Divide 22 by, sorry, divide 15 by 22 and it, you will get this number. So, this is the way we uh, express fractional, uh, fractional number into decimal. Ratio to fraction. Now, it, it, this is fraction to ratio. Look, 3.1414, so write 3141 in a street of point in the denominator, write 1 and put as many zeros as digit after decimal. So, after decimals, there are 3 digits, so we put 3 zeros. So, it is 3141 by 1000. Now, if it is 2.9373737373733 as repeating. The calculation is very easy. Let n equal to 2.9379373737. And since two digits are repeating, multiply both sides by 100. So you will get 100n into, if you multiply by any number by 100, the decimal will go right side by two digits. If you multiply by 1000, it will go 3. So, here we are multiplying by 100. Why 100? Why 100? Because there are two numbers repeating. So, 2 means 10 to the power 2. It is 100. Then, from this equation 2, we subtract equation 1. So, 100 n minus n is 99 n. And if you subtract it, it will come 290.8000 so n equal to 290.8 by 99 or in place of this point we put here 
in denominator 1 0 so it is 2908 by 990 and then it can be reduced to 1454 by 495 so this is the calculation methods but there are shortcut also so if in examination if it is asked you just follow this method solved four sums in the previous two parts and got the following answers. 0 0.3 with a bar over 3 as 3 by 9, 0 0.75 with a bar over 5 as 68 by 90, and 0 0.352 with a bar over 352 as 352 by 999. And the last one was 0 0.2394 with a bar over 94 as 2371 by 9900. What we did was convert the decimals to the rational number form P by Q. But the procedure we used was very long and arduous which made it time consuming and boring. Let's look at a shortcut, a quicker way to solve it. First, let's classify the decimal numbers into simple or mixed recurring decimal numbers. The first decimal is simple since all the digits after the decimal point are repeated. Even this number is simple since 352 is repeated after the decimal point. They are also called pure recurring decimals. In the second example, the bar lies above the number 5 and the digit 7 is not repeated. So it's a mixed recurring decimal. In this example too, only 94 is repeated and not 23. Hence, it's a mixed decimal too. Now let's focus on the simple decimals. Do not look at the answer for now. The denominator of the fraction will have as many nines as the number of recurring digits. Here, we have just one digit that is recurring, it's 3. So the denominator will be 9. And finding the numerator is even more simple. We write the number without the decimal or the bar. It will be 3. That's it. There's your answer. No equations, no subtraction, no variables, nothing. Let's understand it with another simple recurring decimal. The denominator will contain as many nines as the number of recurring digits. Here, we have three recurring digits, 3, 5, 2. So we will have 999 nine, nine in the denominator and the numerator without the decimal or the bar, 3, 5, 2. That's it. There's your answer. 352 by 999. Remember, for simple decimal numbers, the denominator will have as many nines as the number of recurring digits and the numerator is written without the decimal point and the bar. Now let's get to mixed recurring decimals. This is a little tricky but very interesting. Again, the denominator contains as many nines as the number of recurring digits. Here we have only one digit that's recurring, it's 5. So we write a 9 in the denominator. But wait, we are not done with the denominator. We write as many zeros as the number of non-recurring digits. We have one non-recurring digit here, it's 7. So we write one zero here. That's our denominator. What about the numerator? Again, we write the number without the decimal or the bar, which is 75. And we subtract the non-recurring number from it. The non-recurring number is 7. So we subtract a 7. That gives us an answer of 68 by 90. Remember, the only difference here is the 0 for the non-recurring digits and the subtraction of the non-recurring number. Let's try it out with this number now. It has two digits which are recurring. So we write a 9, 9 in the denominator and there are two digits which are non-recurring. So we write a 0, 0 next to 9, 9. In the numerator, we write the number without the decimal or the bar and then we subtract the non-recurring number which is 23. That gives us the answer as 2371 by 9900. So these simple steps give you the answer in like 10 seconds. 
Don't worry about the rules. They are mentioned in the summary section. But here's an interesting question. Until now, we have only looked at numbers like 0 point something. What if we have a number like 2.3 with a bar over 3? It's simple. We just write it as 2 plus 0 0.3 bar. We know how to write 0 0.3 bar in the P by Q form. We take a scratch paper and use our technique to write 0 0.3 bar in the P by Q form. Since it's a simple recurring decimal and we have just one digit which is recurring, we write the denominator as 9. As many 9s as the number of recurring digits. And the numerator is the number without the decimal or the bar, hence 3. This can be reduced to 1 by 3. So this can be written as 2 plus 1 by 3, which is 2 1 by 3 in mixed fraction form. Or 7 by 3 in the P by Q form. Thank you.